All right, so modular programming. Can anyone think of a case where we'd like to wrap up a bit of our code and be able to reuse it? We have some sort of algorithm that we wrote that we want to use again, I guess. Exactly. And what might be the value of doing that? So we don't write it again. Don't write it again. In fact, if we had to make changes, we'd only have to make the changes in one place, even if we use the algorithm in four or five different places. Cool. So we're going to see how exactly we do this in LabVIEW. So let's suppose we've got some code and we'd like to reuse it. Question is, how do I wrap up a piece of code like this into something like this? So if we remember back a few exercises, we wrote a small piece of code which computed the area of a right triangle given its base and its height. And if I wanted to do that in a few places in my application, it would be nice if I had a little box, a little function in LabVIEW, just like this. And of course, we call that a sub-VI. We've been talking about VIs. We call these sub-VIs that get reused in our VIs. All right, how do we do that? First things first, in order to create a sub-VI, we're really going to create a VI. And we'll want to see how we can reuse that sub VI in our VIs. And what do we notice? Just like the terminals on our functions here, this little box seems to have terminals. Two inputs and one output. So we're going to see how we can create a sub VI, assign its terminals, and then use it on the block diagram of another VI. So let's see the pieces of a puzzle of a VI. This will help us in our demonstration shortly to come. So first thing we've worked with on a VI is a block diagram. We know the code. Second thing we've seen, of course, is a front panel. Right? We create our user interface. The third piece we're going to talk about here is important to our sub-VI creation. And that is this icon and connector pane. The icon is the pretty picture I see here to give my users some visual indication of what this VI does. And the connector pane defines the inputs and the outputs. Okay, So we're going to go now into the LabVIEW environment and see exactly how we create a piece of code like this, wrap it into a sub-VI, assign the connector pane, and use it in another VI as a sub-VI. So we're ready to jump into LabVIEW here and see how we can create a sub-VI. One more quick point to note. There's one more piece of a VI, one more part of the anatomy, which we haven't really seen or talked about. And in fact, we never really see it. But I want to point it out here, since we're breaking down the pieces of a VI puzzle, any ideas what that might be? The project? Ah, good question, good question. In fact, we're going to get to projects right after the sub-VI discussion here. The other part that I was interested in here is the fact that when we're working in the development environment, we get to build code, build a user interface in the front panel, and of course we deal with an icon and a connector pane as we'll see in a minute. The fourth piece, which we just want to keep in the back of our minds, is that this code actually gets compiled in real time by LabVIEW. And it gets compiled into a binary, which of course can execute on your computers. That's the fourth piece, back of our minds, just to round out our knowledge here. So we're ready to jump into LabVIEW. So Alt-Tab over to LabVIEW, use my favorite shortcut for creating a new VI, Control-N, and of course my favorite shortcut for tiling my block diagram and front panel, Control-T, and we're ready to go. So first things first, just for review, let's create our uh, user interface and block diagram for area of a right triangle. Pretty easy. Uh, let's build the user interface first. How's that? I'll right click, get myself a numeric control, and call it base. I'll use my favorite way to copy, holding down control and shift, dragging, and then I'll rename that, oops, sorry, control Z to undo. Rename this to height. Okay. Does anybody recall the function or the formula for the area of a right triangle given the base and the height? 
One half base times height. Exactly. You got it. So let's build that in our block diagram. I right click, go to the numeric palette, and get out my multiplication. I need one half of the base. Zero point five ought to do it, huh? Okay, a little different than we did it last time. Show some difference here. And we need to multiply that by the height. Let's go back to my numeric palette. Get another multiplication function here. And wire in my height. So the alternative, right, to this piece here would of course be control B to, to get my broken wires to go away. Using divide by two, trivial point here. But we'll construct it this way since that's how we had it in the presentation. Okay. What do I need? Just the result of my computation into my indicator. Say this is area of right triangle. And I'll tidy up my front panel here. Okay, so that's all review. Now the question is, how do we wrap this piece of code into a sub VI? And it's quite easy. We've probably noticed in many of our demonstrations and exercises so far that we've got this connector pane and this icon here in the upper right hand corner of our front panel. So, first things first. If I would like to define my connector pane, how I'm going to use this as a sub VI, I do so by simply clicking on any one of these terminals. It turns black. Moving over to my control, in this case the base, and selecting it. And notice, it's turned orange. That orange is an indication of the data type. And if I select it, it does highlight for me the control that it's connected to. And so I can finish this out. I'll connect my height. And I'll connect my output, the area of right triangle here. And we're done. If I wanted to give it a pretty picture, I can double click on the default LabVIEW picture there. And notice I get the icon editor. Anybody use the icon editor in LabVIEW before? No? OK. Well, they've undergone a recent enhancement. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, but I'll grab my lasso tool here and select and just delete the inner contents. I'll use a control X to cut it. And I'll fill it with a white background here. It wasn't quite white. Let's see if we can do better. Let's see if we can do better yet. That'll do. And in this case, instead of drawing a picture, I'll go for a simple area of right triangle piece of text in here. Now we know that pictures are often better than words because they span the different languages of the world. But for demonstrative purposes, we'll just say area try and say OK. And notice now, in the upper right hand corner, I see area try. That's what my VI is going to look like when placed on another diagram. And I see the connector pane. That's going to be my interface to the VI on another diagram. So I'll save this. And I like to keystroke. We've kept the list of those. So Control S will let me save this. And I'll save it to, yes, Brian. Quick question. We, we have, uh, I can imagine using like a logo or something for one of our VIs or for the icon. Yes. Is that possible? It is. Great question. So. Let me save this VI here. I'll save it to my desktop. We'll call it area of right triangle. So that's saved. So to repeat the question, we're wondering if we already had a logo defined, if we could use it instead of creating our own from scratch. And the answer is yes. So let's see exactly how we can add our own icon uh, without creating it from scratch. If I already have one, I can go find uh, an existing icon if it matches the 16 by 16 pixels that LabVIEW expects for the icon. And so I'll jump into the exercises here. And I think we've got an icons folder. Indeed, we do. And so I can do one better than creating my own simple area try. I simply drag from the Windows environment right over top of my VI. And magically, it gives me the icon. It's a great question, Brian. 
And this is often a good way to do it, especially if you have an art team or someone who can help create the icons for your API. You can separate that work, have them create all of the graphics for you, and just drag them onto your code all at one time. Great question. So I'll control S to save again. And now I've got a VI that I can reuse. We often call or refer to those as sub-VIs. So I'm going to control N, my favorite way to get a new VI. And I'll minimize this block diagram, or the front panel here, excuse me. And we'll just show one method for pulling this VI onto another VI's block diagram. Click, drag, notice the plus sign, and I drop. And here we go, my new VI is now using my area of right triangle as a sub-VI. Notice that if I hover, LabVIEW is showing me the terminals that we've connected. And if I'm careful, I can see that this is the base, this is the height, and there's my output, the area of my right triangle. So who knows the best way to create controls and indicators right from my block diagram here? Can't you right click on, on the, the terminal? You got it, Brian. I can right click on my base here and choose Create, Control. I can do similarly for my height. Create control, and we'll clean it up a little bit. Right click on my area of right triangle, and this is an output. Which of these do we need this time? Uh, indicator. Indicator, exactly. SubVI is going to supply the value and write it to my indicator area of right triangle. So it took us quite a bit of work to create that SubVI, um, but once we get good at it, it goes pretty quickly. So. Wouldn't it be nice if we could create a sub-VI by simply highlighting a subset of the code that we wanted and perhaps using an option uh, in LabVIEW to have it create one for us? Let's see how we can do that. To do that, I'm just going to double click on the sub-VI we've already created. That's going to open up its front panel. And I'll use Control-T to tile and look at its block diagram again. Now. I'm going to spread this code out just a little bit, give myself some room here, using shift and arrow keys here to move things around. And suppose I wanted to make this piece of code a sub-VI. Any ideas for where we might go in LabVIEW to look for that? Operate? Not a bad idea. I'll choose Operate here. I see I can run the VI can step into and over nodes in the code. Remember that from debugging. So we're close. I'm just going to slide over to the Edit menu. And notice that there's an option here, Create Sub-VI. And we're sort of covering the code, but let me execute this by clicking. And notice what happened. LabVIEW automatically created the Sub-VI for us. And if I double click on it, I see the front panel, Control-T to tile, Shows me the block diagram. Looks just like my previous block diagram. And all I'd have to do here is save the VI, apply the icon as we saw, and I'd be ready to go. I could use this VI anywhere I'd like. We'll close our block diagram here, and we'll ask a very different question now. Now that I can create sub-VIs, now that I can create code, my own code, package them up into sub-VIs and functions that I can use in all of my other LabVIEW applications, how do I organize those things? Any ideas? Well, will we project for this? Aha. Uh -huh. Here we have our project. So Brian got ahead of us a minute ago, and now we're ready for it. Let's take a few slides and learn about how we can use the LabVIEW Project Explorer to organize and manage our code. So we just saw this demo. And we actually saw two ways that we were able to create a sub-VI from some existing code. Uh, can someone help me recall what those two distinct methods we saw today for creating a sub-VI are? Yeah, the easier one was when you just clicked and dragged around it and then uh, went to edit and then create sub-VI. You got it. And the other way, you went like uh, just kind of a manual method. Very good, very good. So the two methods were, uh, first, 
We saw this actually second, but the first one Brian noted for us here is that we can in LabVIEW select a subset of code and then from the edit menu create a sub VI and have LabVIEW do all the work for us. And the other method we saw was to actually create our VI from scratch as we've been doing throughout the course and then using the connector pane and the icon in the upper right hand corner of our front panels we could assign those terminals and use a sub VI as we saw. So we have two methods for doing this now in LabVIEW. So now that we've seen how to do that, let's have you guys repeat that process and get the mechanics down for creating a sub VI. OK, great job on the exercise. Super important and valuable technique, creating a sub VI, reusing the code. Um, wanted to show you very quickly. Uh, we mentioned that we get everything in the course online as well. I just wanted to show you where we would find that particular lecture, as well as the solution video to the exercise. So for those of you who had questions, uh, had you been doing this at home or in a coffee shop uh, using our online experience, which we're seeing here, um, you'd be able to look and jump right into the solution video as well. Let's see that really quickly, and then we'll see how to organize the sub-VIs like we just created. OK, so we saw several features now of the LabVIEW Project Explorer. Um, the LabVIEW project is useful to us. Let's do a quick review. Let's do a quiz on this and make sure we have fresh in mind uh, some of the niceties that the LabVIEW project explorer gives us. So, true or false? Just a few of these. Rapid fire. A project contains the files it owns. Anybody remember? I think yes. Think yes. Well, let's review quickly. The project explorer file is actually an XML file. And so, Go ahead. Yeah, so it, does, it points to it, but it doesn't contain it. Doesn't you got it. Yeah. You got it. Lavi Product Explorer is an XML file, and it contains references. It contains the paths to all of my code, but it doesn't contain the code itself. Awesome. OK, so we saw virtual folders. Question is, true or false, the virtual folder structure in the Items tab always reflects where the files uh, are within my computer. True or false? That's false. Good, Brian, very good. And that's why we call it a virtual folder. It's not a real folder in Windows, it's a virtual folder. And that gives me the ability to, just in my LabVIEW project, organize the code the way I'd like, even if it's organized differently on disk. As we saw with the auto-populating folders, oftentimes you'll want to organize your code just how it is on disk, and we can do that too. All right, powering through. What about different file types? True or false, a text file can be placed in a virtual folder. Remember you pulled an Excel file in there, so I'm guessing a text file can be as well. You got it, absolutely. One of the nice things the LabVIEW Project Explorer does for us is it lets us hold references to other file types if they're relevant to our project. We might be writing to CSV files or text files uh, or using image files. Those are all fair game. And finally, uh, do we need the Product Explorer at all, in theory? Can we build an application using more than one VI without using a Product Explorer at all? I think you, I think you do have to use a Project Explorer. I think we do. Well, there's a good reason you might think that, because we've seen these sub-VIs, and we jumped right into the Project Explorer. But it turns out that LabVIEW actually keeps a hierarchy for every VI, knowing all the sub-VIs that it calls. And so we don't actually have to use a Project Explorer. Now, it's great to use it because we get all the things we've discussed. And we'll see that when we must use it is when we're building executables and installers for our applications. Excellent. Great job.